Hello, my name is Charlotte. I'm 36 years old and work in administration at a small business. Five years ago, I married Lucas, who is two years older than me. Despite the fact that Lucas is a man of few words, he is kind and a spouse I am proud of who is trusted by everyone around us. Even we, a loving couple, were concerned. It's my sister and her spouse. Listen up. Samuel passed another audition for a children's model, and my sister immediately began talking about her son, as she often does. My sister's family had already arrived when we returned home for the summer vacation. She quickly began bragging about her son, as expected. It's becoming busy again, and it's so difficult. It's impossible to avoid it. Samuel is a prince from a fairy tale, gorgeous, intelligent, and athletic. My father, who was at home, responded to my sister's words. Samuel seems to be very proud as well. Samuel, who had just turned five years old, has a nice face and a tall body that anyone would consider attractive. I understand why people want to brag about him, given his intelligence and athletic ability. It becomes a little tiring hearing them brag about their son every time we meet, but that's just how it is. My sister caressed Samuel's head and swiftly looked around the room. Her other child was sitting on the carpet, painting. Sebastian is a seven-year-old boy. Even if Samuel is amazing, her slowness is quite frustrating. That is correct. My sister's husband laughed as well, agreeing with my sister's disrespectful remark. I couldn't help but feel sad for Sebastian, who continued to draw without changing her look in the face of such cruelty from her parents. Why don't you instruct her? Or how about enrolling her in a gymnastics class? No way. It's a waste of time and money to invest in such a sluggish child. My usually silent husband, who had been sipping his tea silently, probably feeling sorry for Sebastian, stepped closer to her to look at her drawing. Is that a princess you're drawing, Sebastian? You're quite good at it. You've clearly never reared a child. My sister responded, any seven-year-old can draw that. Sis. I exclaimed, my gaze fixed on her. In answer, she snorted. What is the purpose of drawing pictures? They will not make you any money in the future. It's a world apart from Samuel, who is already making money as a model. After saying that, my sister resumed tenderly massaging Samuel's head. My heart wrenched as I imagined Sebastian's emotions as he stood there emotionless. This is something we see every time we see my sister and her husband. My sister and her husband adore Samuel, who is both capable and adorable, and they brag about him everywhere. They subject Sebastian to their harsh comments because they consider her incapable. The disparity in the amount of time, effort, and money they devote to them is as obvious as day and night. Sebastian is also cute, in my opinion, and whenever we visit, she politely assists grandma, she is a sweet and wonderful child. My sister and her husband, on the other hand, appear to be Sebastian's charms. My husband and I only intervene when things get out of hand, but my sister and her husband joke that they could give you their daughter. You're having trouble having your own children, aren't you? My sister understands how to toss words that wound me the most precisely. Yes, my husband and I are not parents. We've wanted children since we were married and have been enduring infertility treatments. However, no matter how advanced the procedures we attempted, I was never able to conceive. We eventually reached our physical, mental, and financial limits and decided to discontinue treatment before our relationship deteriorated. I'm worried about Sebastian because my sister and brother-in-law are ignoring him. If my sister doesn't want her, I've considered taking her in on several occasions. Sebastian's predicament is also heartbreaking to my husband, who has volunteered to adopt her if that is what I desire. However, it is also crucial to consider if Sebastian desires to be raised by us. My mother has also expressed concern about Sebastian and considered adopting her on several occasions. However, sustaining Sebastian through high school would be a struggle for her due to her main source of income being her pension, and she was torn over the ethical implications of taking a kid away from her parents. My sister and her husband crossed a line one day when I was dealing with these thoughts. When I got home from work one cool autumn evening, Sebastian was standing at the door of our flat. What's going on, Sebastian? What happened to your mother? 
I apologize. Sebastian was clutching her rucksack and looking down. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I was scared she'd catch a cold, so I invited her in while holding her shivering shoulders. Sebastian began to open up gradually as I gave her some steaming hot chocolate. My sister and her husband had apparently gone with her brother Samuel to New York for a modeling assignment over the weekend. They said that taking Sebastian would be a waste of money due to travel fees and homework, so they left her in my house without informing me. That's terrible. I cursed my sister's complete lack of maternal instincts, unable to suppress my rage. It's because I'm unattractive and useless. Sebastian lowered his gaze as she spoke. That is not correct, Sebastian. You're a wonderful and sweet young lady. Sebastian only shook her head as I tried to console her. I wanted to cry when I saw my tiny niece so depressed and doubting her own worth. When my husband returned home, he was obviously enraged at my sister and her husband. Despite our phone and email attempts, my sister responded unilaterally, I'll pick her up on Sunday, and then hung up. I don't understand how someone can be so cruel to their own child, whom they brought into the world. Despite the fact that she had been waiting for me to get home from work since the afternoon, she was standing in front of our flat by herself. Regardless of how chilly and terrified she must have felt in her small body, despite calmly waiting without crying, Sebastian, let's play with uncle, we'll have a lot of fun. My husband forced a grin and talked to Sebastian, his hands quivering with wrath. I resolved to do anything and everything that would make Sebastian happy. However, my sister and her husband's oppression seemed to make Sebastian hesitant in accepting our offerings. She carefully spread out the notebook she had carried in her small rucksack on the desk and drew for hours. So we decided to sketch pictures with Sebastian, with our notebook spread out next to hers. Sebastian then began to look at my sketches. What exactly is it? Huh? It's a feline. What? Sebastian's pupils dilated. When my spouse saw my drawing, he busted out laughing. Is that a cat? Is he not a monster? A monstrous creature. It's a kitten. A true feline. Sebastian uttered a tiny chuckle in protest of my nasty husband. My husband and I unintentionally exchanged looks. Sebastian, too, is laughing at you. Draw us a genuine cat, Sebastian. What? Isn't this a cat, Sebastian? Doesn't it resemble a cat? Sebastian couldn't stop himself from laughing. Perhaps she thought our interaction with our cat was amusing. Sebastian's smile, which we saw for the first time, was so endearing that both my husband and I burst out laughing. We then drew a number of images together. Sebastian appeared to find my drawings amusing and laughed at everything I sketched. But I was drawing really earnestly. Sebastian progressively opened up to us through her drawings, telling us about her favorite meals and her ambition to become a comic book artist. I told her it was a great dream, and Sebastian grinned sheepishly. My sister then emerged late on Sunday night, beaming from ear to ear. Sebastian's face became expressionless again when he saw my sister. Even though Samuel is only five years old, he's doing exceptionally well as a model, with photographers complimenting him. He could make his acting debut shortly. It's time to depart, Sebastian. My sister yanked her by the tiny arm without even glancing at Sebastian. Is this how she handles her estranged daughter? Unbelievable. It's truly unbelievable. I grabbed my sister's arm and yanked Sebastian back. Huh? What? Apologize? Huh? Should I apologize to Sebastian? My sister shook her head, as if surprised by my statements. Oh, you're sympathizing with Sebastian yet again? Having two children is difficult and can't be helped. You wouldn't understand because you don't have any. Even without children, I can tell you're the worst parent ever. Huh? Maybe she felt irritated because someone was talking down to her. My sister's cheeks flushed, her eyes widened, and she began yelling and raving, spitting all over the place. You're such a failure that you can't even have children. That's right, I'll give you Sebastian. We don't want to deal with her. Perhaps two failures can get along? Her raucous laughter rang out throughout the house. 
Sebastian was looking down, clutching her skirt hard. My anger, which had been building up for three days, erupted when I saw it. I had previously believed that I should not separate a parent from a child. I wondered whether there was a love bond that I, as a non-parent, couldn't grasp. But I was mistaken. I should have divided them earlier. This woman is neither a mother nor a human being. I will not forgive her, even if Sebastian does. I raised my eyes to my spouse, who was standing next to me. He gave me a large nod, as if he felt the same way I did. As a result, I smiled at my sister. Oh, thank you. You're going to give us Sebastian, right? We will gladly welcome her. My sister was speechless, her mouth gaping. Sebastian, of course, gazed up at us with her eyes wide open. We'll come tomorrow to collect Sebastian's possessions. Please notify your spouse and Samuel as well. Eh? Wait, wait, wait. I pushed my astonished sister out of the way and clicked the door shut. I sat down to match Sebastian's puzzled expression and spoke gently to her. Do you want to live with your aunt and uncle, Sebastian? Huh? You see, your aunt adores you and wishes to spend every day painting pictures with you. Sebastian carefully clutched her rucksack, which had a prized notebook. Is it okay, if I draw every day? You're not going to be angry? No, we will not become enraged. Let's do a lot of drawing together. I touched Sebastian's little head tenderly. Sebastian looked down and thought for a moment before nodding. My husband and I took Sebastian in after that. My brother and his wife seemed to doubt that we would actually wish to accept Sebastian. They looked at us with suspicion, as if they suspected we had a hidden agenda. They were relieved when they realized we were serious and swiftly let go of Sebastian. They appeared to be preoccupied with their son, Samuel. It's revolting, but right now, protecting Sebastian is more essential than starting a fight, so we remained silent. So, after consulting with the relevant agencies, my husband and I agreed to act as her guardians. Sebastian, who was cautiously tucked away in the corner of the room, would approach us timidly at first when we offered to draw with us. She then chuckled at the sincere drawings my husband and I had created together. As a result, we gradually became closer and established a family. Let's fast forward 20 years. Sebastian, now 27, has realized her dream of being a comic book artist, even having her work animated and becoming somewhat famous. Sebastian moved out of our house to rent an apartment as a workspace in residence, but she regularly stops by for supper when she's not too busy with work. That's because David's cooking is fantastic. My smile lights up every time I see Sebastian joyfully chewing on my food and speaking those phrases. Knowing Sebastian's emotionless and expressionless days from 20 years ago and seeing her joyful now is immensely rewarding. However, having heard of Sebastian's success elsewhere, my sister decided to show up at our place on a day when Sebastian happened to be visiting. Sebastian, I heard you've become a successful comic book artist. That's my lady. Mom. Sebastian's face became serious as she looked at her mother, whose eyes sparkled and who was becoming extremely flirtatious. I knew you were talented. After all, you were a natural artist when you were younger. What gives you the audacity to say that? My sister ignored the words I spat out in disgust. So, Sebastian, I'd like to make a request. Isn't it true that our town is commemorating its 50th anniversary this year? I'm a member of the town hall staff working on the anniversary celebration. I'd love to hear you deliver a talk. You're a role model for the kids as a comic book artist, therefore, they'd be overjoyed. What do you think? Consider it a chance to pay tribute to your parents. Will you go through with it? After neglecting Sebastian for so long, this woman has some guts. Sebastian mumbled, what about Samuel? Next to me, keeping back my rage with a scarlet face. Huh? Why don't you ask your dear Samuel, mom? That, I believe, is a superior option. Ugh. Her older sister plainly scowled in response to Sebastian's question. In reality, Sebastian and I both knew. Samuel, my sister's pride and delight, had vanished shortly after graduating from college. 
Even though my sister and her husband looked everywhere for him, they couldn't discover any trace of him. In other words, their beloved Samuel had abandoned them. I couldn't give a damn about that ungrateful kid. My dear daughter, I have you. Huh? Past the brink of rage, nothing but a voice of denial could escape. Sebastian's response to such a mother was unexpected. I'll take care of it. Sebastian? Congratulations, Sebastian. A daughter is the nicest thing to have. My sister seemed so upbeat that I wondered if she was going to start dancing. Is Sebastian really going to do it? Sebastian offered a slight nod, as if to reassure me, who was eyeing her carefully. Sebastian asked us to be there on the day of the presentation, so my husband and I sat quietly in the back of the auditorium. My sister and her husband were, of course, at the very front of the hall. Gloating to everyone around them about their daughter. Sebastian confidently began her speech in front of the entire audience. I couldn't help but cry when I saw Sebastian's upbeat demeanor. And, near the end of the supporting meeting, I'd like to present you to a few folks. My kind family raised me. Sebastian plunged into the audience with that declaration. Sebastian. My sister and her husband rose, as if moved, to meet Sebastian. Sebastian, on the other hand, utterly ignored them and moved past them. She came all the way back to where we were sitting. Uncle Lucas and Aunt Charlotte are the people who took me in after my mother abandoned me. Sebastian. Sebastian smiled warmly as he gazed at us. That's an excellent idea. What a clever joke, just like a cartoonist. Yes, that's correct. Look, Sebastian, your adored mother and father have arrived. My sister and her husband were anxiously reaching out to Sebastian with contorted expressions, but Sebastian ignored them admirably. My parents only gave me food and a place to live. When I finished last in a race, they called me a slowpoke, and when I got a cold, they treated me like a disgusting creature, saying, don't pass it on to us, Wyatt. The hall fell silent at Sebastian's announcement, and the panicked voices of my sister and her husband reverberated, huh, and no, that's not true. They've always called my drawings dirty, terrible, and useless since kindergarten, and they've even ripped them up in front of me. Sebastian resumed his calm confession. My sister and her husband denied it each time. However, when the people in the hall mocked them, their faces became thinner and paler. Sebastian faced us, leaving such parents alone. Uncle Lucas and Aunt Charlotte took me in as a youngster who was not loved by her parents. We captured the audience's attention. Uncle Lucas and Aunt Charlotte lavished admiration on my artwork. They gave me a lot of notebooks and pencils and sketched a lot with me. They made my favorite dishes and cakes for my birthdays. And when I had disagreements with my friends, they were concerned about how I would reconcile. Even though I do not receive any child support from my parents, they encouraged me to attend a specialized school so that I could pursue my passion for painting as a career. As a result, Uncle Lucas and Aunt Charlotte have brought me here today. We haven't done anything noteworthy. We simply treated Sebastian as if she were our own daughter. Yes, cherishing a child is a given for you. However, some parents abandon their own flesh and blood. I adore and appreciate my aunt and uncle, who have always taken such good care of me. My eyesight blurs with tears as I hear Sebastian's remarks. My heart overflows with joy. I worried about whether we'd be able to make Sebastian happy after adopting her. Whether or not it was ethical to separate her from her biological parents, Sebastian standing in front of us is proof that we were able to form a real family. Thank you for bringing me up. Thank you for believing in my dreams since you two have adored me. I've learned to appreciate myself. Sebastian, unable to keep back my tears, takes Sebastian into an embrace, and her delicate hand lovingly rubs my back. My husband looks up, attempting to hold back his tears. Tears and cheers wrap the entire venue, mirroring our sentiment. During this time, my sister and her husband sneak out of the venue. Naturally, their reputation suffers as a result. The word immediately traveled across our little town, and my sister supposedly quit her job out of fear of being spotted and has been pent up at home all day. My sister's husband, a PTA member who boasted about his parenting abilities on his blog, felt humiliated. 
His son, whom he had boasted about, remained missing, while his daughter, a renowned comic artist, revealed his transgressions, which her fans blog then spread. His co-workers and community despised him as the blog received widespread criticism. Because my sister resigned her job first, her husband was unable to do so as well. Under stress, my sister does nothing but stay at home all day, and they appear to be having loud arguments late into the night, to the point where neighbors have called the police many times. When their daughter went missing, the neighbors sensed something was wrong with that family. Meanwhile, their son Samuel, who has gone missing, is backpacking throughout the world. His parents subjected Samuel to their intervention in all aspects of his life, including his career choices and friendships, suffocating his childhood. Naturally, every time he had a girlfriend, they would intervene, so he was fed up. Then he met an older female traveler and decided to leave the country with nothing but a backpack to follow her. I know this because Samuel has come to our house on occasion since high school to connect with his sister, Sebastian. He expressed concern for Sebastian, who had been evicted because of him, and stated that both Sebastian and Samuel were victims of their parents. Although his parents believe he is absent, whenever Samuel returns home, he pays us a visit and leaves gifts and stories from his travels. Every time I see them blissfully chatting, I swear I'll never tell their parents. I bought a magazine with Sebastian's comic in it at the beginning of the month. The protagonist's attire in Sebastian's cartoons occasionally features patterns that are drawings of our cat. Sebastian and my spouse refer to him as a monster. I tell her to stop because it's embarrassing, but Sebastian simply laughs and says, it's a drawing by the world's most respected artist. Well, I can't help but laugh and say, well, if the cutest daughter in the world thinks so, it can't be helped.